This video is sponsored by Refinitiv, the company that powers the financial markets. Rob, Sarah, and Apple is due to report what it, it calls first quarter earnings, the quarter to December um, later today. Uh, you've been looking at how Apple sort of quite suddenly came to be worth $1.4 trillion, really doubling in value over the past year. So what's, what's going on? So it used to be that investors have always been perennially skeptical about Apple. The idea is that, okay, they make hardware and hardware companies, eventually their margins go to zero. You know, that, that's probably going to happen some po at time in the future for Apple. And so there's always been the skepticism about Apple. And, and so the multiple that the stock traded on was always, it traded at a very sharp discount to the S&P. So this is price to earnings. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and especially if you compensated for cash, the amount of cash they got on, on the books. Right. Over the past year, the, the story's changed. And everyone's saying, OK, well, they sell uh, iPhones, but they also sell services. And the right. services should be put on a higher multiple because People are get, people are going to keep on buying these services, um, and and that's that's somewhat true. You know, I, th I think for a long time we've argued for years that right. Apple's been uh, people been way too skeptical about right. Apple. However, uh, you know, if, if <laughs> maybe this, now it's <laughs> flipped around a little I, bit. I think I think it has. So because so you in your piece today you point out that Apple Apple's multiple is catching up with Facebook, with mm -hmm. Alphabet, which owns Google, and even with Microsoft, which is not yet caught up with Microsoft, yeah. but catching, and Microsoft's been on a real roll for quite a while now. Yeah, I mean, Apple's now trading at 23 times uh, estimated earnings over the next 20, uh, 12 months. That's ahead of the S&P 500. Right. And now, if you think about what risks does Apple have, uh, and one of the big, biggest ones is China. Right, which those other three companies I've mentioned, well, Microsoft to some extent, but very, um, very but less, but they just don't have that. Yeah, because they don't sell in China. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Apple has two risks in China. The first is they produce almost all their iPhones. They're, they're assembled there. Right. Um, and if the if the virus, the coronavirus, um, you know, if the disruptions become more, that could impact the number of phones that right, Apple Right, this produces. is a supply chain yeah, question. Exactly. Yeah. The other thing is that they sell uh, about 17% of their sales are to chi in China itself. And China, there's been there's been a complicated relationship. The government was kind of uh, it's it's forced various tech companies out of the market. Right. Um, could they do the same thing to Apple? Uh, it, it's a possibility. It's also tied up in the whole U.S.-China trade. Question. Yeah, and nationalism. You know, if the U.S. starts putting more tariffs on China, then you know perhaps China will strike back at Apple, or perhaps Chinese consumers will get get annoyed at Apple and stop buying Apple and, and buy you know domestic. So in brands. short, investors used to be too pessimistic. Now maybe they're just a little too optimistic. Yeah, I think so. All right, thank you very much for that, Rob. Stay tuned for more breaking views tomorrow.